Hello everyone. First of all, are on fire actually. They just released uh, a new update, uh, which is from the 7th of July 2023. And that's yesterday from the time of recording of this video and there was actually a video yesterday i released a video about the ai gen uh the new ai gen uh features that uh, for the floor released officially and uh if you haven't watched this video you can actually watch it uh i go in depth uh, of every single one of them uh, and today we are going to skip this one, as I said, because I already did a video about it, uh, but we are going to talk about the action on data change. Great stuff. Uh, upload multiple files. Great stuff as well. There are a lot of people asking for that. Now, Photoflow actually did that, possibly. Uh, and then uh, we have the GitHub Firebase out. Uh, if someone is wanting to use GitHub, uh, as an notification, uh, you can now do it. And then we have the remove widget in the widget tree, uh, which is much appreciated because it should be much simpler right now to do that. And there are other improvements, bug fixes again, and new uh, future we're working on. But without further ado, let's jump into the action on uh, data change. Okay, so let's talk about uh, action on data change. So you can now trigger actions when data is updated in Firestore. This uh, new feature allows you to handle updates on data dynamically, for example, by automatically navigating to a new page when a document field value changes. Simply select on data change uh, on a widget which has a, a query to respond to changes in the data. So this actually gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of new features, uh, and a lot of new ways you can actually build your app. And let's switch actually to uh, Flow the Flow right now. And let's try to show you uh, how this might look like in real. Uh, so I just created a new uh, page and now I will just add uh, a text field uh, and this will be a text field uh, and inside this text field actually uh, I can have something like uh, on so I can have an action on this text field and I can have on change uh, and I can change uh, the state management, and I can update the app state, for example. And the app state that I'm going to update is the name, and I'm going to set it to the widget state of the text field. So this will actually change uh, the app state. And in theory, I should be able to uh, create a new action. Let's open the action flow so you can actually see it better. Uh, and here uh, we should be able to have a new on change on that a change. Uh, so let me just delete this one real quickly. And let me just see. Okay, so let me know in the comments below because I cannot actually find this new action. Uh, I want to show you guys how you can use it. But for some reason, I see in the image, so if I switch back, I don't know if you see, but it's uh, probably you cannot see it, but it says list view over here. So it's actually selected, the list view it's selected, and then you should be able to have this new uh, action flow, which is on data change. But if I uh, open the action flow, I only have on tap, on double tap, on long press and O pull to, rec to refresh. And if I switch back, uh, I have all those over here uh, in the image on tap, on double tap, on long press, on pull to refresh, but I don't have this on data uh, change for some reason. So I try to actually append data uh, to the list view 
uh, which it did not work uh, for some reason. I don't see uh, I don't see this new action either here or either in the list view. It should be on the list view. Uh, probably I'm not doing something right, uh, but if I add a query, let's try that real quickly. Uh, just add a query here and just see if I am able to get this new action if I add a query. Uh, so yeah, you should actually add a query out of it. I was wondering why it is not working, uh, but now that I added the query, uh, it will actually uh, work uh, when you add a query. So the query should come from an API call uh, from uh, Superbase or Firebase. Uh, so if I go back, it should be a list view, first of all, it should be a list view, and then uh, it should be, uh, so it could be a query collection, could be document for reference, API call, or Angolia search. It could be, I think it's, I think, I think it could be also an Angolia search as well. Uh, and it could be an API call. So if I add an API call and just uh, add users, for example, uh, it should still work. Uh, let's see if I, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, so if I use the response and if I use the JSON path to be dollar sign, just dollar sign, and then this will be an individual user and just click OK here. And the item uh, could be something like, uh, the path could be something like that name. Uh, so let me choose, so that's users response, that's user item. Uh, and the path, so it could be that JSON path, and this one could be that name, for example. Great. Uh, and if I click on the list view, and if I click on add action and click open, uh, I don't see on that a change. So this sh should be only possible with uh, Firestore. Uh, so let me know in the comments, actually, if it's possible in a super base as well. Uh, but if I uh, change this again, and just edit the query and use a query and query the files, for example, use a list of queries, uh, and then I get an error, of course, because I have to change the individual items. And let's use the name here. Again, now the error is gone. And if I click on the list view, sorry about that, and uh, click open, <clears throat> now I have this on data change. And it says this action will be triggered when the value returns uh, by the associated Firebase query changes. This, this will not trigger on an uh, initial data law. Uh, this trigger is unavailable if single time query or uh, infinite scroll are enabled. So uh, you can have something like if the data is changed, if the data changed, then you can navigate, for example, to some other page. And this should totally work. So this is everything you need to know about the action, the new action on data change. And let's move on. Okay. So the next thing is upload multiple files. And let's switch to uh, my project in uh, Fullflow. And I added actually a simple button. And if I open the action workflow, I'll actually delete this one right now uh, to add a new action so I can show you how you can do that. I will write in the search bar, I will write upload. And I have to expand that, I don't know why. Uh, they change it so it's not automatically expanded, but I have to expand it manually. It's uh, utilities and then upload save file. Just click on that. And then you have both options, Firebase and local uh, upload. So let's try with local upload. And then we have this, uh, which type of file you want to upload. So uh, you want the users to be able to upload. So this is PDF, uh, audio file, MP3 or any. If I click any, and if you want to actually restrict your users to upload only a specific type of file, 
you can still do it. Uh, I made a video about it. It's called uh, Upload Any Type of, of uh, File uh, Type. Uh, and you can find it actually in my chat. Uh, and then the new option is allow uh, multiple files. And if I hover it, it says enable to uh, allow multiple files to be uploaded. Uh, and then if you just enable this option, now the users should be uh, enabled to upload multiple files. And let me just show you one more thing because uh, there is another action just for uploading images. So if I click or upload media, and then let's this time let's use uh, Firebase, and it's either uh, camera or gallery, and you can choose do you want to just uh, photos, do you want to uh, allow videos as well, and you can actually see the same. Uh, functionality over here, which it says allow multiple images uh, to be uploaded. But because I think I enable videos, I have to disable the videos right now. Uh, and this is probably not still working because I have to delete this action. Uh, and let's try this one more time. It's still not working. Uh, so it says choose gallery or upload media. To enable, yeah, so it should be either of them because right now it's gallery and camera. But what if I choose camera? What if I choose only camera? Uh, the camera, it's I still I'm not able to upload uh, images from the camera. But what about the gallery? So if I uh, click on gallery, uh, I'm still not able, yeah, so I am not. Uh, so right now I'm able to upload multiple images, uh, but if I choose camera, uh, I'm not able to upload multiple uh, photos uh, of the uh, uh, multiple photos using my camera. But I actually, but I actually did a video about that. So how you can upload multiple photos from your camera, uh, and the, I think the video it's called uh, using your camera. Uh, or camera or something like that. If you write camera, it will be, it will, I think you'll find it. Uh, but yeah, so this is actually about this new feature. Uh, I hope you like it. So let me just show you real quickly. Uh, this is the video I was talking about, how you can upload multiple photos or videos using your camera. I show you in this video. And then I have another one which is uh, storing, uh, which is, sorry, which is upload. If you just write upload, and this is uploading images to your backend, and I have this, uh, make it easy to upload any uh, file type. So using this video, you can actually restrict your users from uploading just a specific type of files. So let's move on. So the next one is GitHub. Uh, Firebase authentication. So now you are actually uh, enabled to use Fire, uh, sorry, uh, GitHub as an authenticator. Uh, so what that means is that users can now use the uh, GitHub account to actually log in to your app, uh, which is actually great. If you want to provide this functionality to your users, uh, you can now do it. And let's try to show you how you can do that. Okay, so in order to do that, let me just delete this section real quickly to show you how you can do that. Uh, you, I just added a button, a simple button again, and in the search here, I'll write authentication and it says Firebase authentication. And let's uh, click on create account. When I click on create account, I have this uh, email uh, Google, Apple, Facebook, and now I have GitHub. So if I click on GitHub, uh, it will just warn me and it will just say uh, GitHub authentication will only work on the web. Please do not enable it if your app is targeting other platforms. So keep in mind, this will only work in the web. Uh, and of course, first you need, don't forget to actually enable this inside your Fire uh, base uh, console. Uh, so this is how it works. Uh, let's move on.
Okay. And the last major feature that we are going to talk about is remove widgets in the widget tree. And it says we are added a new remove widget feature to make it easier to work within the widget tree. Just select the widget, right click, remove widget. This new feature spares children widgets from deletion by reassigning them to the next parent up to the hierarchy. No more menu moving children widget when you want to delete a parent. So let's actually try this real quickly and let's switch to my app again. And it is actually said that if I have a colon with it, a colon, and if I have something like a text over here. So I just added some structure over here. I don't know if you see it from my face, but I can move like that probably, and you should be able to see it. Uh, so I added a button. So I added a colon, actually. I have a colon in my scaffold. I have a colon, and then I have a button, then I have a colon again, then I have a text, then I have a stock, and then I have a text and text. So the idea is that if you delete this widget right now, if I delete this widget, it will actually delete the texts that are inside the widget, that are children to this widget, which is the stack widget. But if I remove it, it will actually move the, uh, it will remove this uh, widget and then move those texts, which should move those text widgets inside the first column widget or the first parent widget. Uh, that is before the stack one in my case. And it says actually, uh, when I hover the information over the remove widget, it says remove the widget from the tree. The removed widget tree will move uh, to be under its parent. This is different from delete, uh, which will, which word delete the widget and all its children. So if I click this in theory, the two, the two uh, text widgets should move, should move one level up to the column and it should not be deleted. So let's see if my theory is correct. So if I click this, yeah, exactly. It's uh, just, uh, it's just like that. Previously, if I click Control Z to go back, previously you should actually move those widgets over here and then move those widgets over here and then delete the stack widget if you don't need the stack widget. But now it is actually super easy. Just select the widget you want to remove and then click on remove widget and boom, voila, uh, the widget it's now deleted. Well done for the flow. And let's move the other improvements. So they say we now allow multiple action parameters from the, for the component. Uh, so now uh, you can actually have multiple parameters. Previously, you had only one parameter. You was able to use only one parameter, but now you can have multiple parameters for one component. And then it says you can now pass uh, an action parameter into a component used in a bottom sheet action. So that was not possible previously before. And it says you can now set web view content from an HTML string. Uh, so I didn't know that uh, this was uh, possible, but of course this is a new feature. So that's why I probably didn't know about it, but you can now set web view content from an HTML string. And it says you can now support a super base uh, JWT token uh, field for super base application. And I think this is was asked by a lot of users actually. So let me know in the comments uh, if this is what uh, you wanted. Uh, but I think this is like the one of the most requested things uh, from users using super base. And the last thing is uh, we're uploaded, uh, upload a local file bytes to uh, Firebase, uh, super base storage. Uh, so you should be in theory, should be able to upload file as bytes 
to Firebase and Superbase. I haven't tried that, to be honest, but let me know in the comments if you have and uh, let me know how that did uh, that work for you. And lastly, uh, let's just read the new features we're working on. So we have this directory organized organization for custom code, which is actually uh, came from uh, like a couple of uh, updates before. And like I said, I think this is uh, like having uh, the ability to have folders for your custom code, which is great. Actually, if you have a lot of code, you can now organize it. You should be able to organize it and then have the uh, infinity scroll across more widget, uh, which is right now we have only the list view uh, as the ability, uh, the widget that you can use for infinity scroll. But I hope more widgets will come uh, like the colon one or uh, the grid view one uh, or uh, like those uh, kind of widgets. Uh, and we have also loop actions. Uh, loop actions, uh, I think it's uh, much appreciated because you should be able to loop uh, in your actions, in our action flow, because right now uh, we actually use hack uh, for that, which is to use the periodic actions. And we have something like um, we have a condition and then check if the page state or app state is true or false and then run the periodic action like every uh, second or every 50 millisecond or something like that. So with loop actions, this would be much appreciated. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's great news actually. And then we have new Flutterflow community. So talking about the new Flutterflow community, I can say a lot of, a lot of things about it. I'm actually much uh, grateful for Flutterflow for contacting, for contacting me and to be an early member of the new community. And I can for surely tell you that the new community will have a better search uh, engine and will also have a better, it will also be better structured and it also uh, will have a building solution for uh, solved uh, posts because right now everything should be, everything is manually uh, written. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort from the moderators to do that and from the community itself as well. And there will be like votes, which will be the most uh, popular post. So you will know out of the bat. And there will be events as well. So there will be like a lot of event, events from the Flutter Flow team, but also from the community as well. So you can follow. So like they are, I think they are, and, and I think the most, the most, uh, one of the most great thing is great thing is that uh, you should not be a, uh, your account should follow, your Flutter Flow account should follow the community. So you don't need to create a new account like, Right now, you need to create from for the current community. You need to create a new account. But with the new community, you will be able to just click uh, inside the flow of flow. You should be able to just click uh, and go to community, and then the account will be created automatically for you. Uh, and you should be good to go and just use the community, which I think it's wonderful. And if you have more questions about the new community, let me know in the comments below. Uh, and uh, the last two things actually, it's fixed an issue caused, uh, causing a custom function validation to fail when data structures were uh, initialized. Um, I don't know actually, as long as I don't remember, as, as long as I remember, I don't know about this particular uh, issue, uh, but it's much appreciated. And it's uh, and another thing, it's uh, fixed an issue with Firestore server and daytime serialization. So it's actually this is new. Flutterflow never actually wrote what there are fixes going to be in the future, uh, in the uh, new futures we're working on. Uh, I think those uh, fixes are already in the beta. And they are just stating to the users that this fix, those fix are actually coming with the next update. Uh, so, so just just to let you know about that. Uh, but I think new features we're working on 
it's not the right place uh, you should um, this this text should be uh, I think it's better suited for bug fixes uh, and those are the bug fixes that they already uh, fixed uh, but I think if they have something like um, bug fixes yet to be fixed or something like that I think it's better to just put it there uh, and this is my own uh, of course opinion uh, for that uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think about the new updates. Uh, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. And before you go, I just want to let you know that I set up a Discord channel, which would be for my 3,000 subscribers. Uh, so thank you very much for everyone who subscribed to the channel. The Discord channel will be officially announced when I reach the 3,000 subscribers. Uh, it is uh, well structured. It will be well structured uh, with the uh, general tab, uh, which you can see the info, the news. It will have also click to talk. So you can actually talk to other members of the channel. And we have the YouTube videos as well, where you can see all the YouTube videos. You can also have, if you want to, uh, uh, if, if you want to request a video, you can go to uh, video requests. And then we have the paid members from YouTube. Uh, which they have a separate channel where they can talk. Uh, I also have from the mentoring sessions, we have the paid uh, members. And then it's structured by backend for the flow API calls, Superbase uh, SQLite. And then you have the design where you can ask design questions. We have the custom code, uh, which is uh, uh, code uh, expressions, uh, custom functions, uh, custom widgets, custom actions, and for the flow source code, we can uh, talk about the for the flow source code as well. And we have integrations as well, uh, pub, dev uh, packages, platforms, if you want to integrate different platforms, we have the general integrations. And then we have, you don't see it from my face, but we have also the settings. We have the dynamic links, we have the push notifications, we have the app settings, we have the Android deployment, we have the iOS deployment, and we have the web deployment. And the last thing that we have is actually we have the languages and we have uh, other languages. So we have like uh, Swedish, for example, Spanish, Portuguese, you know, other languages that, that people from those countries or those languages can talk uh, in their own language. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, thank you very much for all the subscribers. Uh, and uh, before you go, I just want to say that the paid membership for YouTube is now open. So you can be a paid member to my YouTube channel, which means a lot. And thank you very much for all the people who are right now paid members to the channel.